So as editor of AMR, I'm often asked why papers get desk rejected. And there are quite a few things that we look for when we make that decision. So what happens is I receive the manuscript and I look at it and the first thing I look for is whether or not it actually fits with the mission of AMR. So as you know, despite the name, uh, we do not publish review papers. So if your paper is focused solely on reviewing material, then it's unlikely to fit with the mission. We also don't publish case studies or empirical data. So that's kind of the first big thing. Another reason why it might get desk rejected is if the paper is not written well. I mean, if there's typos and grammatical errors, it's really hard to follow and it's really hard to read. So that would be a reason for a desk rejection. Some papers have a lot of quotes. And although quotes are good to make your point, it means that you're not really focusing on what you have to offer rather than just quoting what other people have already said. If you write with a lot of bullet points, then that suggests that there's not enough depth to your thinking. So bullet points in AMR manuscripts tend not to do very well. Sometimes, this is one I see a lot, is when it's too long. Uh, and sometimes length can just mean you have a lot to say, but then reviewers get tired if they have to read a very long paper, and we see that most papers that are very long tend to get rejected. We don't want your paper to get rejected by a reviewer. So we ask that you keep it within about 30 pages of text. Sometimes when it's too long, it just means your ideas aren't clearly formed. So length is one thing that we definitely look at. Another thing that is really important is that your tables and your figures actually make sense with the text that you have in the, in the manuscript. If they're not really related or they're not using the same constructs, then it's really confusing for us readers. We don't know what it means or why you have it in there. And one of the last things that is really important is to have a good discussion section. Without a discussion section, how can we know how you're moving the field forward? So that's a really crucial part to have in your manuscript. Uh, we wanna know why your theory matters. We wanna know how it's gonna impact the world in the future. So those are the main things that I look for. Sometimes a paper seems really intriguing and there's some interesting ideas, but I just don't know the area well enough and so I do send it on to an associate editor and they read through the paper and they may say, well, you know, it has an interesting idea but it's not fleshed out enough because they're experts in that area and can tell. And so they might also desk reject the paper. But the great news is a desk rejection is not a bad thing. What it means is you have an opportunity to work more on the paper and we've given you some clues as to where to focus some of that effort. So if you get a desk rejection, don't take it as a bad thing, take it as an opportunity to rework the paper and send it back to us. I also wanna just clarify, some people say, well, I sent in a paper and it got sent to reviewers and then it got rejected, can I resubmit it? Unfortunately, if it does go to reviewers and you get a decision letter from associate editor that's a rejection, you cannot re resubmit that paper. Now, if it had a core idea and you completely reworked that idea so that you have new theory and new theory development, then in that case, you could submit it, but it would be a completely new paper. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that gives you a sense of what we look for when we first receive the manuscripts and how we make that desk rejection decision. I hope you're not scared off by this. We would love to have your papers, um, and we love that you're working on theoretical ideas.